Hi. In this film, we're going to have a little think about the cello, which, just like the violin and the viola that we've already spoken about, has four strings. And here we've got the pitch of these four strings, the open strings, as we call them. Now, you remember the violin goes G bottom string, upper fifth to D, upper fifth to A, upper fifth to E, and we said that the viola has the same business of strings being a fifth apart, and in fact the viola is pitched a fifth lower than the violin, so the viola strings are C, G, D and A. And when we come to the cello, the cello strings are the same as the viola strings but an octave lower. So we've got bottom C, and then upper fifth to G, upper fifth to D, and upper fifth to A. So you can begin to see it's quite easy if you're not a string player to remember what these strings are about because they're always a fifth apart for the violin, the viola and the cello. Uh, the viola is a fifth below the violin and the cello is an octave below the viola. So those are our four open strings numbered one, two, three, four. And over here I've indicated the range of the cello. So obviously this C is the lowest note that you can possibly play on the cello. And the cello has a huge range. Now there's some um, question as to exactly what the top note could be. It mainly depends on the proficiency of the player actually. It gets harder and harder the higher you go to produce a good sound and to play it in tune. But this is a high note that a good cellist would be able to find at the top of the range. So we're right up here at G. So you can see there's a huge expressive possibility in terms of pitch range. We're starting with this bottom C, up an octave, up another octave, up another octave, and another fifth to go if you want it. And it's always tempting to think of the cello as some kind of tenor or bass instrument. And often the cello does provide the bass line of a piece of music, and we'll be saying more about this in later films. Sometimes the cello can produce a beautiful tenor melody, but don't forget that the cello is also very expressive higher up in the range. So it's a very versatile instrument. And because it uses a wide range, it actually uses three clefs. So the bass clef, obviously, where we've use this to indicate the strings, is where the cello is going to be at the bottom of the range. You can see because it goes so high that really when you get to the top of the range you need to be in the treble clef. But there's quite a bit of the tenor range that's in the middle and you'll often find the cello part scored in the tenor clef. So just to be sure about the tenor clef, this is what a tenor clef looks like. And in the viola film, uh, I was explaining that there are two ways of writing one of these C clefs. And you might be looking at this clef if you've seen the viola film and uh, if you're not too sure about these C clefs, and you might think, well, it looks exactly the same as the clef we were talking about in the film about the viola. And indeed, it does look the same, and it's also called a C clef. But this one is a tenor clef, and you'll notice the difference is not in the design of the clef, but in the positioning of the clef on the stave, because this clef begins on line two at the bottom, and it finishes on a sort of imaginary ledger line up above the stave. And the reason we position it there is because this note here on the fourth line up is middle C. So we want this note to be sort of in the middle of the clef. So that's why um, you know the difference when you're writing for viola in the alto clef, the clef sits very comfortably from the bottom to the top of the stave. When you're writing for cello using the tenor clef, you're starting on line two and going up to that space above the clef in order that C can be in the middle. Remember for the viola in the alto clef, C was on line three, but here in the tenor clef, C is on line four. And just like we were saying in the viola film, you need to remember that this is not any old C, this is middle C. So that note on the board is middle C there. So just so you're happy about what you're doing with clefs, and you need to be ready when writing for the cello to switch between the bass clef, 
the tenor clef for the middle range, and then the treble clef for the high staff. But a very expressive instrument. And just as was the case with the, the violin and the viola, you get these dark, warm sounds at the bottom of the instrument, and then the strings get brighter as we go up. So if I just play a few notes on this synthesized cello sound, um, you can hear how things are really kind of warm and dark at the bottom. And as I come up, the sound gets a little bit brighter. So here we are starting on that bottom C string. So you can hear how the sound is very well matched across the range, but it has a kind of gradually brightening quality uh, as it rises up. And that's what I was saying earlier about it being such a versatile instrument, because you can be sitting at the bottom of the cello range, adding a bit of depth to an orchestral sound, but at the top it can have this great kind of singing quality as well. Now, um, there are one or two things that you have to be a little bit careful of when writing for the cello. Um, um, one thing is that um, sometimes if you have pizzicato playing that's quite fast, be careful that we don't lose definition in that. Um, obviously, the higher it is, sometimes the pizzicato playing is just a little bit, has a bit more definition. But at fast passages mm -hmm. for the cello with pizzicato can sometimes lose their definition. And, and that's the same true at the bottom of the range, that if you're playing very quickly at the bottom of the range, sometimes there can be a slight loss of definition. Now, that may be an effect that you might be looking for, something that's not quite so well defined. But if you're wanting a defined sound, those fast notes at the bottom of the range can just be a little bit indistinct. But you'll find it a most expressive instrument to work with. Very versatile, working across a huge range with the ability to provide bass lines and tenor lines sometimes, and also the ability to provide wonderful soaring melodic lines.